Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, I need to ask the question, and it is a question, not an accusation. Was Shrouded Fable a bad idea? Now, I don't mean, was it a bad idea that we got Shrouded Fable in some point? Obviously, we had to get Shrouded Fable in some way, because we had the Japanese set Night Wanderer. And if we didn't have Night Wanderer revealed in some way, released in some way in English, then we'd be missing a, a bunch of cards. So obviously, we needed to have Night Wanderer from Japan moved over to the English game in some way, shape, or form. My question is, was it worth doing as a special set, as a mini set on its own? Or should it have just been rolled into, like, Stellar Crown, for instance? Which is generally what happens to the A sets in Japan. We get the regular set, plus the A set from Japan, and they kind of mash together into our set. Because, you see, if we look at, like, the, the most recent special set outside of Shrouded Fable, we got ourselves Paldean Face. And the thing about Pauday and Fates is, it wasn't a particularly good set for players. It was not supposed to be a particularly good set for players. What it was, was a collector set that was an extra set in addition to the four main sets a year. And it had a clear theme, and the clear theme was shiny Pokemon. There were a lot of shiny Pokemon. Now, EXs wise, we had 12 in the set. Like, for instance, Powder and Clodzire and Wigglytuff and maybe some others that other people care about that I don't. Well, less than Wigglytuff and Powder and Clodzire. But then we had 120 shiny Pokemon. And we had a whole bunch of these amazing shiny Pokemon like Snorlax and Jigglypuff. And maybe some others as well. But we look at Pound A and Face as a special set and we go, all right. So we had this year-end special set over in Japan, Shiny Treasures EX. And that was like a proper end of year like reprint set in Japan with all the shiny stuff. So we had a bunch of reprints in English. And we had a bunch of weird cards that have been released all over in Japanese. And then we combine them with all of these shiny cards and a few other things like, for instance, the, the gold cards and things like the new Mew that was stunning and all of that. And we wrapped it all up and we went, right, here is an actual special set. That's not what happened with Shrouded Fable. Shrouded Fable was just a Japanese set Night Wanderer with a couple of extra cards popped in as a mini set. And realistically here... It's basically the same thing as, like, Crimson Haze. Night Wonder in Japan was basically the same as Crimson Haze. And Crimson Haze was a set that was just folded into Twilight Masquerade. There were some cool cards in Crimson Haze, don't get me wrong. But in English, we just went, well, Twilight Masquerade is going to be... That is Scarlet and Violet 6. So it's going to be Japan Scarlet and Violet 6, Mask of Change... Plus the equivalent A set, 5A, which was Crimson Haze. And then we had all of those really cool cards, things like Blood Moon Ursa Luna, for instance. We got them all. But they came around just as part of Twilight Masquerade, because that's generally the way things work. The A sets over in Japan tend to get just folded into the next main set in English. So not all, but a lot of our sets will be made up of a main Japanese set and an A Japanese set, for instance. That's not what happened. Night Wanderer became Shroud of Fable. It was its own thing that was released as its own set, as a special set outside of the regular release. Now, my argument in favour of why I love that this happened with Shrouded Fable... It made worlds more fun. We weren't going to have a main set released in time to be legal at the World Championships. Because Twilight Masquerade came out way too far before. And Stellar Crown's coming out way too long after. Which meant we were going to have the same metagame as the North American International Championships. Except we didn't. 
because of Shrouded Fable. And I, I defend Shrouded Fable. I like Shrouded Fable. And this is my number one argument. And look, as a caster and an analyst and a YouTuber and all of that, it makes it way more interesting when a big tournament like Worlds has a new metagame. So I know I'm biased in that way. But seeing cards like Kyurem, which can do 110 to three different Pokemon, coming out and doing well was awesome. Seeing Academy at night making Maridon decks way better because Electric Generator hits more was awesome. Seeing Neutralization Zone was great. Seeing Night Stretcher as an option in a bunch of decks was awesome. Seeing the Petcherunt Sweet coming around to help with switching Pokemon was great. And obviously Fez and Dipti as a draw engine was fun. And then there's stuff like Dust Noir. We had a lot of cards from Shrouded Fable for what is a very small set. We had quite a lot of cards that were represented at the World Championships. And I loved it. And this was the only way to do it. The only way to get Shrouded Fable or Night Wanderer as it was in Japan, legal for the World Championships was to do it in this manner, was to have this special set which was released on its own. And I think a lot of the criticism from Shrouded Fable has come from the fact that if we look at the other special sets, they're all themed and they're all pretty much collector focused and you can see, okay, that's what makes it a special set. Whereas Shrouded Fable Wars, here's a Japanese mini set that we're just releasing as its own thing over here. And I understand why that's, well, to use a very British phrase, rubbed a few people the wrong way. Because before Pound A and Fates, we had like Pokemon Card 151 or Scarlet and Violet 151. Which was a set that was themed after Gen 1. And it had so many cool Gen 1 things in it. And it wasn't as cool as a Japanese set. Because we didn't have like the Pokeball Hollows, etc. But we did have special illustration rares of like the first partner Pokemon, for instance. And there was so much in there that was a real, it was a Gen 1 set. You had every Pokemon from Gen 1. And I think that's kind of the point here. The other special sets, you can see why they're special sets. They make sense as special sets. They've got the theme. Whereas Shrouded Fable was just a regular set, but smaller, and it didn't have that collector part to it. Like, don't get me wrong, one of my favourite things about Shrouded Fable is the special illustration rares of the Loyal Free, and I think they're all brilliant. But is that enough to carry a special set on its own? The consensus tends to be no. There were other cool cards like the special illustration rare Cassiopeia, for instance, which I know a lot of people enjoyed. But that was the only special illustration rare supporter in the entire set. Earth and Vessel finally getting a gold card was cool. But did we necessarily need it? And the thing is, I'm having a look around at Shrouded Fable, and it's not been out very long at all. And I am already seeing deep discounts on Shrouded Fable. Like, it's the most recent set. And I'm already seeing deep deep discounts on the set like for instance you know the elite trainer box over at magic madhouse not a fan of the website not endorsing the website it's just a nice example of how far it's fallen and how quickly it's already well 13 pound 50 off rather than 50 quid it's 36.45 that is a deep discount on the elite trainer box of what is the most recent set out there and it's not alone, incidentally. Here's a little bit of a run where actually Unicorn Cards got it for 36.25. Endgamer got it for 37.50 when you include shipping. It's just readily available. And it's ended up with this interesting thing now where actually, if you're paying like 36.50 for nine packs, that means you're paying basically four pound a pack. 36 pounds would be exactly four pound a pack. So a tiny smidge over. Which means that the booster bundle now is actually not really worth picking up. Because to take the UK as an example, well, you're paying 24 quid for six packs. That's four pound a pack. This is on the Pokemon Center officially. But I can get the Elite Trainer Boxes for four pound a pack. And then I'm getting all the extra stuff as well. I'm getting the Petcherunt promo. I'm getting the dice. I'm getting the sleeves, etc. 
So it kind of means that the booster bundle, you know, we waited five weeks. Remember, it's five weeks after the release of the rest of the products that we get this booster bundle. But by the time the booster bundle comes out, you can just get other products at essentially £4 a pack. Which means we no longer need to bother with the booster bundle, which is a little bit weird. And this is what's got me thinking more about Shrouded Fable. The fact that actually there are already deep discounts on the set. I've heard a lot of criticism from people from all corners, and I really like the set. I love the fact that we've got this smaller set, which is easier to collect. I adore the fact that it became legal for the World Championships and made that a lot more interesting. I like the fact that it's themed after the Loyal Free, even though it doesn't have theming in the way that, like, the shiny Pokemon from Pound A and Fates or 151 or any of that. And I like Shrouded Fable, but it has received a lot of criticism. The deep discounts that were seen already show that it's probably not selling as well as it was intended to. And this does make me wonder whether we're going to do this again. If we look at other special sets, it's Japan had this really themed often end of year set and we get it as a special set. This was the first time where they were just like, it's a regular Japanese mini set, but we get it as a special set. And there are certainly signs out there that it hasn't gone exactly as well as hoped. And I'm wondering if that means we don't get another thing like this again. Maybe next year we don't get a mini set which becomes legal for the Day of the World Championships. And honestly, I think Worlds this year would have been poorer had we not had that. I love the fact that we did and I think the World Championships was better because we did. Either way, I'd like to hear your opinion on it. I've told you what I think. I like Shrouded Fable. I will defend Shrouded Fable. I think it was a very cool set. I know not everybody agrees with me. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely unknown one, who's been a supporter of ours for a while now, and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.